Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger, my friends. It's that time again, and perhaps for the final time, as we have Elizabeth here for the King of Fighters 15, and she is the 39th and final character for the launch roster of the game. So as always, I will give you a complete trailer breakdown, but also let me tell you a little bit about Elizabeth, both her gameplay and what she's all about. And one of the things she's all about, well, is Ash Crimson. She was introduced in the Ash Saga and is uh, very much tied to the character. We'll get into it a little bit more in a minute here, but just to let you know. So Elizabeth, Liz, Betty, whatever you want to call her, she's pretty unique as far as King of Fighters characters go. She has a bit of an anti-zoning suite. She's good at punching characters with fireballs, seemingly with the trailer doubled down on that as well. And because it's King of Fighters, yes, she has a command grab, at least in the older games. Uh, we don't know yet because it's not showing the trailer here. But she has a command grab and it's a pretty good one and it's a big part of her game plan. If you pegged Elizabeth as kind of like, you know, the hoity-toity European noble archetype, well, you'd be completely correct. She's effectively a French aristocrat who also is, I guess, a paladin or a cleric, I suppose, as her power is simply the light. And she wields the light to, well, beat your head in. So to get into the story and the thing, so Elizabeth made her debut in the King of Fighters 11, the second game in the Ash Crimson Saga. She was part of the rivals team, so herself, Duolon, and Benimaru, against the, in quotes, hero team, which was Ash, Oswald, and Shenmue, because Ash is uh, very much an anti-hero. So why is Elizabeth gunning for Ash Crimson exactly? Well, it's because they're childhood best friends. They were raised together on the same estate in France, and while not related by blood technically, they are effectively brother and sister. After her family's estate was burned down, they were separated and she's never really interacted with them since. Until the King of Fighters 11, as Elizabeth basically hears Ash is on an absolute warpath. I cover these story bits in the Ash Crimson video, so I'll link that at the end of this video, but uh, suffice to say, Ash is kicking ass and taking names. People like the team Sacred Treasures, well, Ash is beating them up and taking their Sacred Treasures. Elizabeth joins the tournament to find out why Ash is acting the way he is and, if need be, to put him down. She might love him like a little brother, but she's very willing to stop his rampage. Naturally, there's a lot of twists and turns, and I won't go all the way into it, but very unfortunately for Betty, she basically gets the bad end. Too late does she understand Ash's plans and motivations, and she basically can't save Ash from himself. All the time and all the effort, and she lost her best friend forever. If she knew sooner what was up, maybe she could have saved him. But Ash is gone forever, and the worst part is nobody even remembers his name. She's the only one left. Good thing this is fighting games, though, and there's never any permanent consequences, because basically they find and resurrect Ash at the end of King of Fighters 14. And obviously enough, he's playable in 15, and she's on Team Ash. So bad for lasting consequences, but really good for playable rosters. Now, as for Liz in the game, uh, she's in King of Fighters 11, 12, and 13, and her 11 version is pretty different from her 12, 13 version, and will have to remain to be seen what the 15 version is like. But as it stands, she's generally speaking a pretty close range competitor. One of her bread and butter moves is quarter circle forward and punch. I call this the chop, basically. Uh, it's good for combos, good for everything, basically. Also destroys projectiles. You can pretty easily, on reaction, destroy anything, especially with the light version, which is very fast. She also has Coup de Vent, which is basically her rush uppercut. All the names are very, very French. And this is your combo fodder. It's good for juggles. It's everything you need to be, basically. Juggles into itself. You can also juggle after the fact as well. You can end combos and air resets and then basically force a mix-up directly after the fact. That's actually one of her better gameplay features. Get pretty decent combos in the corner, also ending in air resets. Just really good overall. In KOF 13 anyways, because we didn't see it in the trailer for 15, but uh, she has a bunch of command steps. The X version is also very invincible as well. 
And she's allowed to cancel her command steps directly into special moves, basically giving everything a lot more range and utility. Also, just an easy way to bypass zoning without the risk of a roll. She's also a counter character. So her counter is not just a hit. When she counters you, what happens is she basically teleports on the other side of you. She can counter highs and lows. So basically, if she counters you, prepare her to start blocking. Also, she can EX counter. It comes with additional time stop. So she basically recovers a lot faster than you do. In some situations, these lead to guaranteed punishes. And yes, it's King of Fighters, so you better believe she has a command grab. So it's not shown in the trailer for King of Fighters 15, but I gotta assume she has it still because it's a very big part of her game plan. As you saw right there, the EX version, she is uh, very freely allowed to juggle after the fact. In the corner, juggle potential goes up. Also, she can once again just hit you with an air reset, then you get mix up potential after the fact. Also works fun with one of her supers. At least in King of Fighters 13, it has the juggle anywhere property, meaning even after you air reset the enemy, if you were to do a combo air reset them, you can still get the super after the fact. So basically you can use up all of your juggle potential, yet you still get the super at the end. So basically it's a neat way to tack on just a little bit of extra damage. Personally, I just think that's one of the cooler things about Elizabeth. King of Fighters 15, she has an all new level three, but in the older games, it's a counter move as well. And she basically goes pure divine on you, makes the screen explode in light. All right, so all that said, it's trailer breakdown time now. First thing I gotta say is Liz absolutely has one of the best models in this game. Looks absolutely fantastic. Definitely very easy to catch that whole noble air about her. And team wise, yes, this is our final team. This is team Ash. So Betty and Ash and Kukri because Kukri helped bring Ash back. So as always, we start with a whole whack of normals. And here we have an all new command normal. I'm assuming this is like forward and light punch. Before her old command normal was the exact same animation as her power attack or CD. So I'm assuming they gave her this just to change things up visually. Next up, jumping heavy kick. We have her actual CD, that's her power attack with the wall bounce naturally, and her forward throw. Next, a little story bit here. We have Ash, recently back from not existing, having a grand old time it would seem, and Betty definitely feeling some way about that. Going forward with the trailer, a very, very big deal, because Elizabeth now has a fireball. She's never ever had any kind of projectile before. So you see Benny basically jumping backwards into it because he's a big dum-dum. So at first glance, you'd think, hey, fireball, good enough, right? But if we look real close and real deep at this, there's something more to it. So before Benny runs into it like a dum-dum, it actually stops. So it might not just be the usual shoot the fireball, go across the screen. You might shoot the fireball, then it gets where it's going and then stops and hangs out. And in a lot of ways, that's a lot better than a more traditional fireball. As in, at that point, you now own that part of the screen. Ash Crimson has similar style projectiles, so maybe Elizabeth is taking a page from his playbook. Next up, we have our rushing uppercut. That's our combo monkey move. And then another amazingly large and significant discovery here for Elizabeth because her chop. The chop used to destroy projectiles, but now it reflects them apparently. That's definitely a lot better and stronger, and it's not like it's an EX version or anything. She's not glowing. Benny's glowing because he's doing his EX move, but she's not. She already had a good game against projectiles, but now with a reflect instead of just destroying a projectile, that is so, so much stronger and better. Here we see her counter and the teleport behind, and I think the effect actually looks really badass in this game. That looks super cool. And then after that, we have another version of the chop. I'm assuming the reflect one was a light one. This one perhaps looks like it's the heavy punch version of the move. After this, it's super time. So first up is a level one Noble Blanche. This is basically just a big hit super. This is a level two Grand Rafale. So this is the one we showcased earlier in the gameplay section. Previously, this move only ever had a level one version, so that's pretty cool. Round went on, and now it's combo time. So first here, crouch light kick, stand light kick into the uppercut, close heavy punch into the new command normal, into the chop. Now it's close heavy kick, the new command normal, and then uppercut, another uppercut, 
EX uppercut and then follow with a chop. So basically flexing on the combo ability. I don't think this exact combo could have worked in the King of Fighters 13. Close heavy punch again, the new command normal again. EX uppercut, so bigger launch. And then we go into a chomp and directly into a level one super move. So just showing some of the juggle options that are available to you. Now, next up after this is another very big deal. Her EX counter now works against fireballs. It never did before. If you tried to counter a fireball, you just would have got hit in the face. So this is twofold. One, that means she gets to get in against any fireball, any zoner, whenever she wants to. All she has to do is spend a bar. And then she'll teleport and she's directly on you. And secondly, if you poorly space a fireball, this also means guaranteed punishes for Elizabeth. With this and considering one of her moves got upgraded to a reflect, this means she is definitely a very anti-zoner character. And in our final sequence, so raw max mode activation, we have a short hop into heavy kick, close heavy punch, command normal, uppercut launch, and then another uppercut, because once again, these are very juggle heavy moves into a chop and level one super. This is our Grand Rafale. We get our hit and then we have a level two Noble Blanche, which looks like it might be able to OTG. Does it very low to the ground anyways? I guess we'll have to see him wait for the game, but it looks like he basically touched the ground at that point. And then climax cancel into our all new level three. Using her divine light powers creates a big old, well, bow and arrow basically. And uh, she styles on you pretty hard because she shoots you through the heart and then a beautiful dove comes out the other side. And that's the Elizabeth trailer. And overall, I got to say, I'm very impressed. She got some very significant buffs for sure. It remains to be seen if she still has her command step and her command grab. There's definitely been a lot of trailers where they didn't show every single move. So I'll we'll have to wait and see on that. Although I don't really see them taking those away from her. The command grab, especially in King of Fighters 13, is a pretty big part of her game plan, so losing it would hurt her pretty bad. And my friends, uh, that's the end of this journey, I guess. This is the 39th and final character trailer before the launch of King of Fighters 15. So if you've been along for the ride the whole time, thank you very much for watching all these trailer breakdowns. It's been very fun doing them. I'm going to be a little sad when they're gone, actually, because uh, they've been a steady rock for me for a very long time. Look forward to the game's releases. I'll have all sorts of content, combos, guides, matches. I don't know. It'll be all sorts of King of Fighters 15 stuff for sure on the channel. So I hope you can look forward to that. I myself very, very much am looking forward to the game's release. It's not too far away now. It's a little less than a month, actually. We do have DLC characters, too, at some point in the future, right? We got a whole season one, so there'll be more character trailers eventually, I'm sure. But for now, my friends, that is the end of the video. So I got to say, thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. And go out and play some